Okay. Okay, this is uh, our second big lesson for our nonfiction uh, magazine project. Anybody have any ideas for the project formerly known as the History Fair Project name? You got one? Oh, uh, uh, that's okay. He's fine. Anybody got any named ideas? Okay, remember that's, we're trying to come up with a snazzy name for this project. But meanwhile, one of the big things uh, that you have to do, include in your magazine project, is ten, at least ten, different nonfiction text features. <coughs> Mary Fagan, please come to the gym. So in Mary order Fagan. to do that, we need to know what nonfiction text features are. Any clue? Subtitles. Subtitles, maps. maps. What are those kinds of things? Um, those are good examples of text features. They're stuff that describes what you're what you're writing about. <laughs> That's a really close thing. Can you let that our friend back? I'm going to ask. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the two people in the tall chairs back there to come up here for a minute. A lot of times in math, you might hear the word attribute. We did this back when you were. They're going to get their chairs back. First and second, get up here when we were in first and second grade talking about attributes or sets. Um, so take a look at these gentlemen. What's a common attribute that they have? They're both wearing blue shirts. Both wearing blue shirts. Yes, sir. Um, different sizes. Like okay, attribute, so, something that's in common. Something that they have that's the same. So their height would not be an attribute or a characteristic or a feature. They both have black boots on. They both have black boots on. Do you have 165? They both have brown hair. They both have brown hair? They're both men. They're both men. All of those are characteristics or features that they both have in common. Characteristics, features, attributes are all, all synonyms, and they describe their the parts that make up the whole. Yes. And they both have the same bracelets. And they both have the same bracelets, which tells me that they on the same to, side. On the same side too. Do we have one sixty five? Um, and. Uh, a description box, like of a word. Yeah, that that would be a text feature. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. You can sit down. Okay. So in text, in writing, there are features or characteristics that are most often in nonfiction. Sometimes they're in fiction writing. And in your magazine, you have to include at least ten different non-text text features. This little notebook here that I put together has about twenty of them in there, but there's many more. So you can add, your list doesn't have to be just from here. And, but this book will be used as a reference. Yes? Are you going to give us like a copy of those papers? I'm not going to give you a copy of this paper. You're going to be doing some work on it. I'm going to print another copy of this out and post it in the room, but this book will also be in here for reference, too. So all this color ink would be really expensive to print out for everybody to have their own copy. So a title page. Title page generally has three things, the title, the author, and the publisher. Who's the author of the mag all the magazine articles? Who? Oh, everybody. Uh, Who's going to be the publisher? Uh, Us. Yes. Yeah. And you can make up a publishing company if you want to, too. Yeah. That's 65. So we should have like a page for each of those? You don't. Uh, this is interesting. In a book, you have a title page. In a magazine, your title page information might look a little differently or might be not all on one page but you'll have all the information for a title page. And we'll be looking at magazines later today, and you'll see that. Can you, like, all have it on one page, like, Dolphins of the World, by blah, 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 yeah. and then have the copyright date and stuff? Yeah, this one has it all on one page. Yeah. So, table of contents. Where's the table of contents usually located? In the front of the book. And what does it have? Two things it has. Come on. Chapters? Chapters or subjects. subjects and page numbers. Page numbers. If it doesn't have the page numbers, you don't know how to find it. Table of contents helps you organize your information. Helps the reader know where to find it. So if I'm reading a nonfiction book about mammals of Maine, and I only want to find out about bunny rabbits, am I going to want to look at the deer chapter? No. Nope. No. I only want to look at the bunny rabbit chapter. This is right. Yes. Um, I think it should say about an hour left, and I'm not going to talk for as long as an hour. Does it say about an hour? 
No, it just says it has just a little thing. Let me take a quick peek. Yeah, that's about half. We should be okay. Thank you. Good job checking, though. That's important. And thank you. Thank you. Index, where's that located? Back of the book. Usually in the back of the book. Usually in the back of the book. It also has two things. Which two things does it have? Huh? What two things does it have? Index? Yeah. Page numbers and the subjects in the book that are in the book. They um, can be important words. They can be topic words. There. Glossary. What's that? And where is it located? Um, it's usually in the back. Um, and it's words that the reader might not know and what they mean. Okay. Do you want to tell me more, Jackson? Like, I don't know if this is right, but. I think it is some, like, um, facts of things that you might think are interesting. Um, not quite. It's, it's more like a mini dictionary in the back of the book for the important words. Yep. Subtitle? Any idea what that is? It's right after you open the book. It's right after the title. Yeah? It's like... Like right when you open the book after the title, it says the title again. Yeah, so in this example, the title is Dolphins, so the subtitle, About Dolphins. Or if I was doing Jackie Robinson, and then my subtitle might be um, uh, The Life of a Negro b Baseball Player. Or it might be, um, if I was my title was Hockey, my subtitle might be Focus on the humane black bears. A heading is the title of a page or a section that tells what the reader will be reading about. So if it was on dolphins, like in this example, the heading, the subtitle would be how dolphins act, and the heading would be dolphin movement. And then, this one, there's a subheading. Sometimes there's all these parts in here. Sometimes there's only one or two of these. So the subtitle is How Dolphins Act. The heading is Do Dolphin Movement. And the subheading is Underwater. What would be a second subheading they could have under this one? How Dolphins Act, Dolphin Movement, Underwater. What would be next? Where else do dolphins move? Uh, what? Habitats? It could be habitat, but where would their habitat be? It's already in the water. We're talking about their movement. Uh, forgot. Underwater. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know what it's called. What it, are they Sorry. under the water or? Above. Above, the, above water. the water. When they do what? Breathe. Jump. They breathe. They breathe and they? Jump. Jump. And so their movement describing that. So, so that subheading would be above the water. So uh, you had that motion when they you were doing that with your hands. Keywords. Keywords are words that are usually written in bold or color or italic or some kind of different font to draw attention to them, to the words. And know that it's an important word. And that way you know it's an important word, yes. And sometimes, like, they have that definition box. Like, if there's... Uh, a bold letter, like under like the place where they wrote it, they would have like a definition box and it would tell you what that word means. Yes, yeah, sometimes they have a text box on the side that tells that, or it could be in the glossary, or it could be in both places. Exactly. Guide words, you usually only find these in dictionaries and encyclopedias and indexes. Gentlemen, please focus. Um, so, a guide word is at the top of the page. On the left-hand side, is the guide word is the first word that appears on that page and that topic. And the guide word on the other side of the page is the last word on the bottom main one. And so if your word falls alphabetically between these, so if we were looking up porpoise poop, 
Would that be between torpus and sleeping? Yeah, if I was looking up um, uh, habitat, porpoise habitat, or the habitat, would that be on this page? No, because it's not between P and S. Text box, like 65 pointed out, might be on the side, and it might be an interesting word. It might be a fun fact. It might be a did you know. Think about um, Magic School Bus books. They have a lot of text boxes on the sides. Do you remember those? Yeah. My friend in the corner, you're supposed to be focusing up here, not on the books. Thank you. Timeline. It's a way to show events that happened in time. This timeline happens to be? Up and down. Yep. What's the fancy math word for that? Vertical. Vertical. Oftentimes, timelines are? Horizontal. Horizontal. Yeah. There we go. Illustrations and photographs. That's pretty easy. Yeah. If you were something? writing yours, how would if you wanted to print out one, could you like do like drawing in? You can do your original artwork. You can do something from the internet that we cite our sources, say where it came from, or you can take a photograph of your own and insert it. Any of the above. Yes. Oh, I know what they, what's different about them too. What's An illustration is a drawing and a photograph is from like a like you're the first person, and you're the last class that I've done, who's noted that difference between illustration and photograph. An illustration is a drawing or a painting. Um, oh, great. Great job. Um, the other thing is, if you were doing dolphins, would you have... Would it make sense to have a dinosaur illustrated in there? No. Well... Possible what dolphins evolved from. Dolphins evolved from. Do you want to say add any more to that? That's what I was talking about. Yeah. It, but you would have to make the connection. You couldn't just put it in there. Would it make sense to have um, the duck who goes into a store from the duck song? Yeah. No. Would that have Would that have make sense to put it in here? No. No. Because that duck, the illustrations and photographs have to help. Explain your text. Make your text clearer to your reader. Okay, captions. What are captions? Um, wait, I think I know, I think I forgot about a caption. Um, it's sort of, I'm thinking something else. Okay, it's okay. Captions, captions. Um, it's, it's a, under a picture to explain what the picture is about. Yeah, usually it's under, sometimes it's over, but usually it's under, and it's either a phrase or a word, like lion, or dinosaur, or Mrs. White, or Mrs. White is reading a book. In this picture, Mrs. White is reading a book to her class about uh, integration in the 1950s. So it could be a lot of details or just a short little label of it. Labels. Labels are the actual words you put around charts. That's good. Go ahead. Words that identify the parts of a drawing or paragraph, uh, photograph. You have excellent vision. <laughs> yes. It's the words. Now, this part is what's tricky. These are the labels. The actual words are called labels. This next thing you've been drawing since you were in first grade, and I know that. Diagram. Diagrams. The whole thing, the labels and the picture, are the diagram. Just the words are the labels. My friend over there with the socks, focus up here, please. Well, these are labels. These are diagrams. So you could have a diagram, so that counts as one text feature, and labels. That'll count as two. But if you did, you can't, and if you had ten illustrations, that wouldn't count for ten non-text features, though. What if you had, like, two illustrations? Would that count for two? No, it counts no. as one. Any number of illustrations counts as so one. So those are all text features. And you, what if you put in, like, you really liked and you put in, like, all of them? Do you put all of them? Great. Map, pretty easy. You did a big map unit in the fall, right? So you all know what a map is. It's just, it could show where they live. Where they live, where, oh, any number of things that they can show. How hot it is. 
charts and graphs, pie graphs. Pit, does, they don't mention here, but does anybody know what a pictograph or a glyph is? No. What's a glyph? Isn't it like a symbol that um, is should be that like is a word in like glyphs from Egypt, like are words? That that is one way to think about it. It's hieroglyphics. It's a picture of a word. But glyphs in math and, and in science and in charts is a picture of something that means that stands as a symbol for it. So if I was going to do a pictograph of the number of books read in our room, and I didn't want to put tally marks or bar graph, I could do little books and say each book represents five books read. So under um, somebody's name, um, uh, under Kyle's name, for example, I might have three and a half books. So how many books would he have read if each book represented five? Um, Seventeen and a half. Just about. Yep. Yeah. Yes. If you wanted to write your book, do, would you have to do it in pen or pencil? We've talked about that before. What have I said? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Icon, you frequently hear that about icon um, on computers. Um, what's the icon for the browser Firefox? A little world, a little fox on it. And the action that tells you is click on me to get to Firefox. This, an icon is a little symbol that tells you to do something. So if you were going to do a little text box next to each vocabulary word, you might have a picture of a word in a question mark, a little symbol, so that people know that's what you're doing there. It's just a way to visually organize your information. And another one is bullets. They're not actual bullets. Again, it's a way to make it a list. You can do it with dots. You can do it with stars. You can do it with dashes. If you were doing dolphins and you were really artsy, you could do little tiny dolphins before each one. But that's if you're really into that. So this book is going to be in the classroom for us to use as a resource. But today for the assignment, I want you to practice locating in a magazine, doing a scavenger hunt um, to find these features. Now here's a question. In a scavenger hunt, do you have to find everything? No. You have to find as many as you can. Do you have to find them in order? No. No. So there's two sides to this page. You can put your name and today's date. You're going to, when you get your magazine, you are going to look at it. So this magazine, I would put underneath this word scavenger hunt. I would write Ranger Rick and then the month and year, April 2014. So you're going to have two dates on it, the date for the today and then the date of the magazine. And then using only the magazine that you first get with, you're going to work to see how many of the scavenger hunt things you can complete. This is going to go in your packet, and this is one of the assignments you need to complete for the magazines. Yes, sir? Do all of them have, like, every single thing? No. Great question. Any other questions? Okay. We can turn that off.